Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are here, and once again, it is our great pleasure to be in your reality. It is also a tremendous pleasure and comfort to be in our spot at uh, uh, in Sedona at Seven Centers Yoga, and uh, we are familiar with this territory. It is a portal and a building, a location, a place on earth that offers opportunity to grow, to be safe, and to expand your consciousness. And we'll tell you right now, you are popping popcorn, and if you were all wearing beanies, they would be spinning uh, quite quickly. And that impresses us, because it means that you are thinking. And this is going to be the only way through these times, is to think your way, feel your way, and combine that intelligence. We know you've had the electronic lecture, so we will not uh, belabor it, but we will say to you, use it mildly. Use it out of necessity and live your life separated from it as best you can. It is going to become more invasive, more intrusive. And if you can spend more time in nature or more time doing real life things, even if you are bored and you don't know what to do, it is good to be bored because then it activates creativity. We are asking you please, as we've asked the people of Earth for now, nearly 30 years now, take charge of your lives, be in your bodies, elevate the human experience, restore dignity, and get smarter, become more psychic, embrace the idea you are all different and you have different capabilities. Uh, everyone incarnates for a reason. Some of you have been trapped in lifetimes of struggle and you want to hold on to it in this lifetime. This is an opportunity to liberate yourselves, as Chet said, to experience or to go beyond your horizons more than you ever, ever, ever imagined. And so, really, the theme is about healing. It's what you are all doing. You are healing uh, misconceptions. You are emerging from ignorance. Yet at the same time, there are more people on Earth who are engaged in confusion and ignorance than ever before. They have the opportunity to use electronics. And what do they do? Rather than to become informed, they watch birds fight each other. Or, or they play candy games. Don't waste this lifetime. Recently we made a very heavy pronouncement. Or at least the people said it was heavy. Sometimes we have to lay it on thick to get through to you. We are here for a reason, because we care about you. You are part of an experiment, but you are also in a crucial stage of your soul's development. You are one version, one version of a larger collective of self. Yet that version that each of you call yourself, your name, your identity, you have the opportunity to elevate, to live, to become, just because you want to. Because you make the decision to say, hey, I never thought of myself as having a super duper biological computer. Wow, I'm going to start figuring out how to use it. Rather than, oh, I'm bored, I think I'll turn the TV on or the internet on or, or get sucked into my, my, my dumb phone. <laughs> People, whatever you manifest in this lifetime, and the values that you embrace, the fears that you hold on to, or the victories that you achieve. Just imagine that that's what you will be experiencing for a million years. Nanoseconds, the opportunity for an acceleration, the opportunity for massive incarnation, and for advancement. They don't come around every few thousand years or every great year. A great year being uh, every 26,000 years, approximately. 
you are incarnated on earth in a rarity of time. We are a collective of energies across the lines of time, from the future, from your point of view. Pleiadians, we call ourselves. Yet we are a large collective that comes and goes and interacts with you, and we have taught others who care how to communicate and deal with humankind. You are supported by cadres of beings who want to see you elevate yourself, who help you but will not rescue you. You also are being subjected to, at this time, an invasion of some very dark forces who have kept humans in ignorance uh, for a long, long time. All of this comes under the large umbrella of your colonizers, uh, the Anunnaki. Anu, of course, being the emperor, if you want to use those terms, celestial emperor, and uh, Anu being a long liver, meaning that to these uh, Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came, can live millions of years. This, of course, is a conundrum to you, uh, in certain terms. It is also a conundrum for them because when they come to Earth it is difficult for them to make adjustments. Just as if it is difficult for you as a human to comprehend the life perhaps of an insect that may live a few days. It's the time lag. And you may think, oh that insect, what kind of quality of life could it have? But the insect is not in the 24-hour day. The 24-hour day, 2 times 12, or 12, is an Anunnaki number. They, have, they identify themselves by the number 12. They call their planet the 12th planet. Recently, your space agencies, not recently, if you look at since the nano uh, completed itself, that was uh, 2012, De Sombra 21, uh, since the completion of the nanosecond, that period of acceleration, uh, the space agencies can't dribble it out fast enough. Every week there's a new discovery, a, a new this, a new this. They are, they are wedging space wide, wide open, yet not explaining anything. And this is because they are prepping you under pressure of the Anunnaki uh, to uh, prepare for much larger undertakings from space. It, although it's interesting, they're speculating that Pluto may have uh, constructs on it, and they're boggled by where this would come from. It's all Anunnaki. Your entire solar system is a colony of the Anunnaki. They are colonizers. They are, well, let's say, you emulate them through the Roman Empire through the British Empire. And this empire building of taking over lands and then developing them, taking the resources. So when you talk now about uh, terraforming Earth through, we're perfectly timed. Were they set up or were they a cosmic synchro? We want you to start asking yourself these questions. Are the dribbles that are coming out every week about space, is this a, a setup? Or are these synchronicities? Because you do run on a synchronistic world, a synchronistic multiverse that is sourced by intelligence that is far beyond the Anunnaki. Remember that. They are players in this game just as you are. They are long livers, of course. They take on various visages, but they also have a caste system, let us say, in their, in their planetary hierarchy. And just as they have created caste systems 
uh, by class on your planet. Uh, they have this within this system everywhere. The USA is supposedly an outlier on the planet, a, a system, uh, if you recollect from your US history, that is a mer meritocratic, uh, based on you elevating yourself lifting yourself up, not expecting others to do it, or not inheriting a high position or a low position, but that your deeds, or that your thoughts and your actions can lead to accomplishment. So, the quickening of space information, the recent announcement that SpaceX, another name of course, for Nibiru, the home of the Anunnaki, is not only the 12th planet, it is also planet X. X, of course, is a cross. And you have a major religion on the planet that has you worship the cross and a being <coughs> that is on the cross. People, you're at a point where you're going to start seeing through things that you believed were true, that you were told was true, that you grew up with. Sometimes it's discomforting. Go for a walk. Sniff some essential oils, as our vehicle said. Make a pot of soup. Integrate it by doing real things. Get some body work, a massage. If you can afford it, get some rolfing to get yourself structurally realigned. Do the things to integrate what is going to come up in you because you are seeking it out. And we are very pleased that you are seeking it out. You are a new wave that uh, has more difficult terrain to navigate because you have a shorter amount of time to take in a vast amount of understanding. And you new wavers, you YouTubers, uh, tend to spend too much time on the electronics, which robs you from the internet, yet catches you up on the internet. You're going to have to use common sense. Is this really necessary for me to read this, to look at this? Turn to yourselves, because after this weekend, kabumi, you are going to be uh, in a state of remakableism. We made that word up. Uh, it's part French and part English. Remakableism that you will be amazed at how smart you are going to get. That's what we want you to accept. You are going to become much smarter by allowing the inner to feed you information. And this, of course, is a very exciting process. This is absolutely necessary because, again, there are very good forces that are working with you and they are not going to appear while you are immersed in electronic stupor. They are going to appear in your dream state, and this is why it's important to really have a nice place to sleep, of comfort, of beauty, not overly stimulated, so that you're getting good rest. Good health, good mind, good rest. If you think that you are trendy and cool because you get by on four hours, you're burning yourself out. You're burning yourself out. So, let's go back and jump around a bit here. We digressed into uh, uh, how to take care of the body, but let's go into the bigger picture of space. There's a pressing need right now to bring people up to snuff because there are agendas that the Anus want fulfilled. In the larger scheme of things, one of the big problems that you are sort of being swept away with. The chief emperor Anu, he delegated Earth to some of his children about half a million years ago. Two males, uh, one Enlil, uh, commander of air, or uh, let's say chief of the command, and and Ki, uh, command of Earth. So one had Earth, and Ki. He was the metal urges, the miner, the scientific genius. And Ki 
uh, and Lil, the brother, and Lil understood space. He ran the space program. This is why it's interesting that you have a man named Elon, L on, on, Anu, L and Lil, running SpaceX program. Think about these things, people. Names, numbers, astrology are all clues to a larger game of reality. Let's say that you are played, you play, others play you. There are purposes large and small. There are dark forces and good forces. And that you, each of you get caught up with forces that emulate your values. Let that sink in. You get caught up with forces of an invisible nature that emulate your values and your belief systems. And the non-physical realms are quite real. So now, these Anunnaki can operate in frequencies that you cannot see as physical beings. In actuality, the skies of Earth have been photographed uh, with craft all over, all the time. Uh, they operate just outside what you call your visible spectrum. So with these, uh, these characters, uh, the father Anu became frustrated over his two sons. And he wanted to run the mining, uh, to supply the gold that was then put into particle suspension and, and, and thrust into the atmosphere, the stratosphere of the planet X. It kept it from being exposed to too much cosmic radiation. And Enlil uh, came to, was sent by the Anu father to say, Enki is not doing as good a job as he can. We need to develop uh, the space a program to lift the gold off of Earth, take it to the moon, take it to Mars, and then shoot it out there uh, to uh, planet Nibiru, also called later on Marduk, also called Wormwood, which is also in Rusha, Chernobyl. Is it sinking in? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. The Anunnaki, at least according to their records, claim that uh, gold was found on Earth by a deposed emperor that Anu fought for control over, and Anu won, and uh, this man, Alalu, this being, Alalu, was banished from Nibiru. He took missiles and he left Nibiru and he came through the asteroid belt, or they called it the hammered bracelet, and he nuked his way through it. This is a big key to understanding what's going on in the world today. The Anunnaki Alalu brought nuclear weapons to Earth. All of your nuclear developments, situations, centers, programs, bombings are all connected to the Anunnaki. Just about every nuclear energy center, of which there are many, many in the USA, particularly on the East Coast, uh, some in Europe, uh, Germany, France. It's top secret, of course, but the cat's out of the bag, or the reptile's out of the bag, however you want to say it. Uh, that they've all had, since they've been built 50, 60 years ago, they've all been spotted with craft, what you call your UFO craft, hovering above the centers. What do you think this is about? Build it and they will come. You have built nuclear plants around the planet. You have people still mining for gold. The Anunnaki always want also diamonds, semi-precious jewels. They operate with Earth's resources in ways you cannot dream of. And so you are part of their territory. Anu did not know how to stop the, the fighting, the competition. Uh, the two brothers had a sister. They both had children with the sister.
Let that sink in. Anu produced his heir and Lil with his half sister. Sounds a little Egyptian because they set it up. And then the two brothers with different mothers both had children and partnered with their sister, sometimes called Ninti, sometimes called Ninma, sometimes called Nin Hasag, sometimes called Mami. Because she, along with Enki, worked in East Africa in the laboratory to create what would be called the uh, primitive worker, to replace the Anunnaki's, the giant Anunnaki's that they brought with them in mutiny. They worked in the mines for a few hundred thousand years and didn't like it. You can imagine, yes? Yes, yeah, so maybe you can't. That's all right. We are giving you a little background here. Some of you know this background. We are seeking to trigger you because it is necessary. We want to trigger you to remember, not in a bad way, not to frighten you. We want to tell these stories so that something stirs within you and you start to remember what you know and what's in your DNA that is necessary to create greater stability on the planet. You are all highly telepathic. All people are, if they would apply it. And post-nano, everything is being boosted. And this is why everything is being pushed on you for war, for financial collapse, for chaos, for bigger and better Super Bowls and basketballs and diversions and diversions and diversions. Because the powers that are and that want to be and that are finished are very, very, very frightened. Not over your guns. They have bigger, better guns. Rest assured, there's a space war going on now that you cannot even fathom. No, the frightening thing to many is the combo of the human heart, which is what makes you so human and so precious, and the awakening smarts of a DNA that has been locked down for, well, let's say that uh, the genetic experiments to make the primitive worker occurred about 200 to 150,000 years ago in that circa vicinity. And so not only do you have ancient Earth DNA part of your lineage, but you have been tweaked by Anunnaki. So what they are frightened of is it what if you, without sampling the tree of knowledge or the tree of life, activate the tree inside of you because of the timing, because of celestial clockwork that they watch vigilantly and confuse you about it, yet you are subjected to it and part of it. This is why we say there's an urgency for each of you to accept what's happening within you and what's guiding you to be here this weekend, but what's guiding you to make all of your decisions. And you must always go back to what do I want, my thoughts create. And if you cannot think of what you want in, in the big distance, in the immediate moment, you want to be clear thinking, you want to be safe, you want to be harmonious and in balance and you want to attract the support and the abundance of the multiverse. If you keep conditioning your agreement with this type of this is what I am available for without specifics, you're going to create a very general climate and then you can start going for what you really want. So this is what the Anus are frightened of to a large degree because they awakening humankind is a wild card. You are figuring things out. Once you figure things out, you cannot be controlled. You will simply move vibrationally outside of this control mechanism. But back to why the mesh you are in today. Anu, to create peace between his siblings, or his children, sorry, and all of their, their children, 
he said, I'm going to divide the earth among you. And this is according to the records when Anu made allegedly his last state visit to earth. And so Anu uh, paraded through uh, um, the Mesopotamian Valley. Of course, that's their territory. Of course, that's where you've had your wars for the entirety of the nanosecond, entrusting that uh, where the Anus laid civilization and fought their battles, uh, they're all being recreated now in their old territory. And so that is important to understand. If you do not evolve, you get stuck doing the same thing again and again and again. So Anu says, all right, I'm going to not only divide the lands, uh, Enki, you have Africa, the people of color, black and brown, they are yours, uh, and Lil, you have the Jerusalem portal, uh, you run the space center there, uh, Ninma, you can have Sinai, etc. It's all divided up. But more than that, they were fighting. And so he said, I'm going to give you rulership of earth according to the processional cycle. And so every 2160 years, 2160, add it up, nine, nine in the Chinese world is considered to be the number of the emperor the highest, closest to God, 2160, the processional cycle. Many people round it off to 2200 or shorten it out to 2000. Anu said, every new processional cycle, each family will take a turn. Now, our vehicle explained to you here that 15 years, the slowdown years as we call them, the changeover years, traditionally the changeover, when everything completely changes from 2013 to 2027. This is a day and one half to the Anu Naki. 300 years, essentially the American experiment, which is Enki's experiment in freedom, which he feels committed to provide freedom to the human species with his sister Ninma. 300 years is a month to the Anu Naki. So you have to wrap your head around this timing. And it's not that you have to logically figure all this out. We are filling you with data that's all legitimate. But it's going to plug into something over the next two or three days is after tomorrow the equinox then you are going to have a solar eclipse a new moon and this is going to be a big deal because there on throughout the year quite a bit of chaos is going to unfold and you are being open to information that will give you confidence and assurance rather than panic and confusion. As you emulate confidence, you can be a little, well, I don't, not sure what's happening. They're creating confusion. That's fine. You see the confusion and not get so messed up. You don't, you are confused. But each of you will act as a stabilizer for where you live and the people around you. Every tw and they will be, you will serve as an anchor on the boat. You understand this? Yeah. It's so important at this time because the stakes are growing higher. This celestial regime change between one family and another happens. It happens every 2200 years as Anu's last state visit, as we said, was. His state visit was about uh, 34, 30 5 BC. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, the Nippur calendar was implemented. That is the calendar that today the Jews embrace as their oldest calendar, but it is also synonymous with the rise of civilization in Egypt, in Sumer, and synchronistically or set up, as you know. Uh, it is also tied into the uh, Mayan 5,120-year-long calendar. 
The thing is this. Lots of clues were put into place that point to now. And remember, now to the Anunnaki is a little bit different than your now. Your now is immediate. And when you make up your mind now, it has very powerful effects. And the Anunnaki's have a really hard time slipping into your now because of how vastly they experience time. So you are a befuddlement to them in the methodology of, uh, you are like a virus of sorts. You can mutate and grow and understand very, very quickly. This frightens them. They may study something for hundreds of years in your terms. When they decided to build the primitive worker, or they debated for a long, 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 long time. So your advancement, your advantage is how quickly you can get smarter, activate, figure things out, and not get sucked into their control mechanism. They want devices everywhere, not because it's NSA or, or because it's, it, it's the world government surveilling you. These people are all being used as well. It is this technology that those in space are utilizing to program, as our vehicle said, autonomous robots that will be completely in charge. The Anunnaki have decided that that would be a more effective way to have control over Earth, is to have autonomous robots run you, because the Anunnaki can't run you, they can't understand you. Yet if each of you puts your, pours your whole life onto the devices and the internet and everything is known about you through emails and letters and, and, and watching you and camera you and surveilling you, they can use this to create programs that will then be implemented into RT Intel or false life and these will become your new rulers. This way the Anunnaki can go and expand their empire and they don't have to be here themselves. And you have rulers of your own kind running you, except they are not real humans. Real humans are a threat. They're being phased out. And if you wonder, let's just say this. The advertising is it's little <laughs> devices that know how to find each other in the body. And then they build antennas in the body, nano-sized antennas. And then the cell towers and the, the satellites can then control the antennas that are in your body in case you don't have a cell phone. Is this becoming clear, folks? Being inundated by a flood or having the earth shake itself into smithereens. You are in the reduction of population if you are not smart. It takes incredible stamina and intelligence to be able to thrive and survive in today's world. And you may look at many people who look like they are, but if you check out their credit and their banking, they're all in debt. Everyone is living 10 to 100 times above their means. Is this why you came to Earth? It can be fun. Do not think that you are being punished to have wealth or to enjoy the material world. This is why you incarnate, but people get lost and they forget that there's a spiritual purpose to all of this. And in this lifetime, the stakes are very high because of the massive transformation that is occurring to change the species, to eradicate it, to literally reform the Earth, Moon, Mars. This is all a big plan. It is a plan far beyond humans who mostly live 75 to 80. Many of you can't plan for your retirement. How could you possibly plan for 100 years in the future? It's not you, it's the Anunnaki that used humans 
to lay out these plans. And people say, I had a vision. Well, where does the vision come from? Uh, and uh, who's benefiting from it besides lining your pocket? We would say this to many of the beings that have been puppets of the Anunnaki and betrayed humankind because they became wealthy. They didn't care about what happened to the earth. And in some sense, dear people, this is a recreation of the Atlantean experiment that you remember as Atlantis. Atlantis. Years ago we said, if you want to understand Atlantis, read the Bible, the Old Testament. People scratch their heads. Now it's making more sense that Atlantis uh, was given that name. But uh, the Anunnaki are very famous for changing their names and for coding you by sound. Very, very important way they, they get you to, to entrain with them. So for example, uh, Anu, the chief uh, emperor, his, his name is spelled A-N-U. And one of our assignments for the last few years is to ask everyone, for your own personal development, to playfully uh, come up with uh, 22 to 25 words that have uh, A-N or A-N-U in the word. Uh, and you'll be really clever. Uh, Chet, a few years ago, he right away shot out with January. J-A-N-U. Wow! Uh, let's look at the planets. Uranus. U-A-A-N-U. Wow! How did that happen? Let's look at gold on the periodic table. Wow! A-U. How did that happen? Let's look at the word Luna. That were our vehicle's uh, golden word. Well, there it is. L-U-N-A. Ah, clever those Anus. They put it in backward. <laughs> it's in all language. Do you understand? You say on all the time. And you don't even hear yourself saying on. You say A-N and O-N all the time. Flick the light on. This is a game of awareness. The more you become aware, the happier you will be. You may have to uncover things you don't want to know. Ignorance is bliss, but in this life it will destroy you because it's what you're going to get for a million more years. So do you want a million more years of fear or ignorance or are you going to rock it off now? You're going to rock it off now because it is absolutely necessary and you are all being compelled by your higher selves, your guides, and the good forces to go to a new level. For some of you that have been around a long time, that new level may be an inner peace of not changing your life, but wow, the picture is really expanding, and you're holding a space. And when you hear negative news, or the potential of this World War Three, or this, or this, you say, peace, stability. Because if I heard it, it must be I need to hear it so that I can send out stabilizing uh, energies all over the world. These are for the, let's say, tried and true. The newly awakened, it's your life that you are going to change. Whatever is not working and hasn't been working for a long time, release it and let it go. Trust your inner, but if you have newly awakened, you want to open the body more, you want more time in nature, and you want to, without guilt and worry and concern, these are banned words, you can say swear words sometimes with us, but no should, trying, guilt, worry, or doubt. Those are banned words because they imply victimhood, failure, powerlessness. When you say, I am trying to do something, you say, I want to do it, or I intend to do it, or I am doing it. Language is how you are controlled. Sound connects you to higher vibrational frequencies and lower vibrational frequencies. One of the ways the young people are always, uh, especially from the post-World uh, War II era onward, 
uh, you were all young once, uh, music and the vibrations. Now it has been said that the composers of the uh, post-Renaissance era, let's say the era enlightenment, that kind, 1700s, 1800s, uh, the music they were playing was exalted in that when this music is played today, the what you called classical music, if you listen to classical music before a major test the next day, whether it is a driving test, uh, a physical stamina test, uh, a licensing test, a, a test you have in school, you're smart and you will, will grow and you will do better on the test. Animals will heal and have more peace. People heal more quickly when classical music is played around them. This says that in the 17 and 1800s, some humans on earth were tapping into a higher force of sound that was helping elevate the human experience. And remember, the Anus have come and gone from Earth. 200 years is nothing to them. They may leave a few guardians around. And you know the word E-D-I-N. This is what the Anunnaki uh, called uh, home of the guardians. Home of the Guardians, E-D-I-N. Later it became E-D-E-N in the Bible. So they have uh, seeded uh, various uh, situations and uh, you are now in uh, the turmoil of some of the situations that they want to um, control or rectify. And again, you have two different family sides fighting. And then even within each family side, and you have the sister and the middle peacemaker, there's different agendas. Some are very warlike. And some, Enki in particular, the creator god, he is considered to be the creator god. His sister, Ninma, is the mother god. And then by some, there is the evil god. <clears throat> That is called Enlil, but Enlil points the finger at his reptilian brother and says, you know, he is Lucifer, he is Satan. You see how this goes? You see why you are confused as a people? But you're coming out of confusion now. But this year is going to be a big test. Big, 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 big test. And Enki knows that his family is screwed up, royally, celestially. And just like you can get stuck in one lifetime or many lifetimes, and you get re kept repeating the same old patterns, and you say, why is this always ending up like this? Because it's what you sign up for, you believe that's all you're going to get. You want to change your reality, you have to change your beliefs about what is possible and you have to change your expectations. Beliefs are agreements that you make with reality. The problem you have is the Anunnaki have laid out all the agreements for you and said believe this, believe this, believe this, and believe this. Do your beliefs work for you? This is the stage you are at. Are my beliefs working? Do they bring me satisfaction? Do they bring me a safe, uh, love-filled, content life. Am I provided for? Well, do you want to provide for yourself, number one, and will you allow the wealth that is all around you to be part of your experience? That is a belief. If you believe you come from poverty, if you have to work really hard, don't have to work, you all have to work. If you don't work and you get too much money, you will become debased. It happens to almost all wealthy people. If it is given over, and it's a karmic thing, unearned money, unearned wealth is often the biggest burden there is because you don't know what to do. You have to get up and get about things and get creative and you get your reward by proving to yourself that you can take care of yourself. And in today's world, it's not laying bricks so much or, or learning how the masons can build uh, arcs or arches. It's thinking. 
it's attracting it's waking up in the morning and saying I could use more clients in my business and I'm going to attract people to me by vibration and I call them in because I do good work and I have a few people I, I am working with today and I'm going to leave them a thousand percent satisfied and I don't need to uh, get on the YouTubes or everyone's app uh, to advertise myself. That is, that is not the most effective method of your biological computer. Once you believe in your own power and accept it, then the fun begins. And we are trusting. We are being generous with this trust that each of you are here because you are inclined in that direction towards self-empowerment. The belief that you can attract. You attract all the time, but you attract what you've been programmed to attract. What do you want? And again, harmony, safety, laughter, love, beauty, security, meaningful work, trusting relationships, vibrant health. Do you dare to believe? Do you dare to make this your reality? Because this is what is required. And Enki knows again that you are awakening. And Enki is on your side to a large degree because he knows the awakened humankind will eventually be the victory and the releasement of the psychosis of the Anunnaki family and perhaps empire. You are not the only place of population in their empire that is awakening. You are not yet in mutiny, a word that they dread. Dread. Because their own kind have mutinied and they have fought amongst themselves. They've had many nuclear wars amongst one another. They are a family with immense, immense problems. And you have inherited many of their problems from incest to war to hoarding of, of jewels, gold, worship deceit and Enki, Enki knows, Enki again, not the heir, he's the illegitimate genius of Anu. His mother is Ki, Ki, the consort of Anu. The mother of Enlil is Antu. Enki knows, along with Ninma, that you are going to fire off. And once you do, yipes. It's a game they don't understand because you will start operating with frequencies and energies. You're not there yet. But wait till 2020. Crisis, especially planetary crisis, tends to really ratchet up and elevate people in consciousness. Trauma can create amnesia or it can activate super psychic abilities. This is why the rulers are afraid too much trauma uh, can awaken people. Yet the right amount can dump them down and paralyze them in fear. You are part of a large, large, large evolution of consciousness. You are not victims, even though at times things occur to you where you feel powerless, you feel swept up by the winds, or you attract your life situations that you think, why is this happening to me? This is not a good thing. Why is it happening? Sometimes you attract things of that nature so that you will make a change, so you will get out of what you are doing, so you will break the routine and say, all right, this is finished. If it's not working, I've given it my best. And then you allow yourself to operate with the belief system that you exist 
in a benevolent situation of support. If you believe this, and you are smart, not stupid, we are not asking for blind faith or, oh, just beam me up, I will ascend, I'll, I'll do this, and I'll go into the angelic realms. The angels are merely the Anunnaki. The, the angels that come up and down and go back and forth, these are the minions of the Anunnaki. They have mated with humans, some of them have helped humans, some of them have hindered humans. Uh, some of the angelic realm actually are police force. They are nice policemen, but they hold you in position just to make sure that there's no mutiny, you understand? No outsmarting the gods, no figuring that wow, the entire earth is a colony of the Anunnaki, wow, have we been ponzied. This is a huge, huge, huge recognition. Everything today, all the turmoil, financial, especially the wars, especially everything that is happening in the Middle East and Afghanistan, etc. This is all old Anunnaki territory. And many of the battles, the wars, are feeding invisible forces with darkness and negativity and forces feed off of this and they hold humans in this state of paralyzed fear. And uh, but the real reasons for all of the disruption from Anatolia, that's Turkey, into uh, Mesopotamia, that would be the land between the two rivers, uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, Euphrates, Tigris, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Egypt, uh, the whole northern Africa, this is all Anunnaki territory. It is honeycombed, not just with ancient structures that you can go visit if ISIS hasn't blown them up, which is what they've been doing. ISIS is Al-Qaeda, is the Taliban. ISIS was basically, it is a, it is formed by, its genesis is from the USA and intelligence. Our agencies, if we use that word loosely, <laughs> alphabet agencies, let us say, is more appropriate. And just to fill in that blank, there are soldiers among this ISIS group who are not of Arabic origin. They are constructs. And there are robotics and organic constructs that have been let loose in the war zones uh, to create even more and more and more fear, to drive people out of the territory. Why would someone want to empty these territories? Oh, it is made to seem as if Russia is involved and in, uh, ergo dawn from Turkey and then you get whoever else the regime changes are, the Israelis, the, the Egyptians. Folks, it's what's underground. The Anunnaki are premier builders. They have buildings throughout the solar system. And the buildings on the moon and Mars have long been denied, even though they have been photographed. This is their territory. They have made bases. There are major constructions in uh, the country. The are premier builders. They have buildings throughout the solar system. And the buildings on the moon and Mars have long been denied, even though they have been photographed. This is their territory. They have made bases. There are major constructions in uh, the country you call Russia, particularly in its far eastern zones, because uh, they were old Anunnaki territories. Actually, um, there were, again, rocket bases, not only in Baalbek, uh, in the Middle East, uh, the portals of Egypt, uh, Sinai, Jerusalem being mission control, uh, the valley there, the Mesopotamian valley, that was a missile launch rocketing center. But it, it was in Russia, it, it was at, at Tiwanaku, it was in South America. It, it's been all over, the Great Lakes in the USA. These beings are builders. They build, well, here's their legacy. 
in China. They taught the ancient Chinese who were their, their, their people. We want to live here. We need a mountain and we need a lake. Build it. The Chinese went, they dug the, dug the lake out and they made a mountain. And then you have tiger dragon mountain water. The emperors would demand this throughout China. The emperors in China are only emulating the Anunnaki. The Pope, as the head of Christianity, is only emulating and a representative of the planet of the crossing. He's giving you a big clue, carrying that cross everywhere. And then the Queen in England. If you notice, she and her family, so to speak, they all wear the cross. They are loaded with the crosses. They wear crowns filled with jewels. One of the ways the Anunnaki began to communicate with the humans from long ago, they and their kind intermarried with some of the human creations after long periods of time when the humans became more than clones and when the women began to find their comeliness, as it was said. And so Anunnaki interbred, and the result of their interbreeding, the demigods or the changelings, these were the ones who ran the countries uh, for the Anunnaki, and they would wear crowns. And the crowns would have it be embedded with all manner of diamonds and jewels. You don't know how to do it today, but there's hardly a woman who wants anything other than a diamond if she is getting married. This is an Anunnaki, mimicking. Because they know how to use diamonds. The hardest substance lasts forever, remember. And now you can die and have your ashes compressed into a diamond lasting forever. <laughs> yes, you can. So this diamond is a mimicking, an, a, a cellular memory. Just as wearing gold is a cellular memory of the Anunnaki, they value gold, we must value it too, even though we as humans don't know what they use it for. And then the diamonds, they used to be able to use all semi-precious stones and crystals, and Sedona's full of them, to contact people. How do they contact you? Hello, humans, it is we, the Anus, calling you. No, it is not like that. They get you to be impulsed by them, to you receive an idea, you have a dream. And so when the king or queen wears the crown with the jewels, you are very far removed as a species for being able to have this communication. It is why your rulers have become so debased and so frustrated because they too are minions of the Anunnaki yet they have lost all their power to really, really feel vital about life. Now, then there's you, the humans. And how important is this story? In terms of history, it's some of the most important history you'll have to know. Because all the things that are happening today are out pictures of this. These two families are arguing over whose turn it is to run Earth. And how they are going to fulfill uh, Earth's purpose. We have suggested that Earth is a living library. The whole concept of evolution doesn't hold water. Do you evolve as a species in terms of adaptation and smarts according to the cultural environment of the era in which you live? Yes. Do tadpoles turn into whales? No. Do tadpoles or slime in the ocean eventually evolve into monkeys that walk on earth and that you then as monkeys evolve into uh, thinking Homo sapien Cro Magnan man? Absolutely not. Could it have been deepened? Unlikely. Unlikely. Species are integrated and whole into who they are. 
Yet as the DNA chain has been decoded over the last number of years, or they claim they have decoded it, they find that the variety within the DNA is, is very minimal. And yet you look at the creatures, and they are all so different. They are so unique. How many species of mice are there? Each form of life is designed and then evolved into adaptation to its environment. There is consciousness in all things. And to take on the human consciousness is one form of it. One form. There's a plan by the Arnu to use the living library and to relocate, as Mr. Chet was saying, uh, other life forms onto this earth plane. It's always happened. There's been all manner of life forms, as you understand them. There's no shortage of the various types of humans who have been here. Today, uh, there's a great exposure of this, and many people are, are revealing the wide variety of human forms. Little tiny humans, medium-sized humans, uh, your size, which you call average, uh, and then much, much larger. Uh, even it was reputed now uh, that one of the Roman emperors, oh, sorry, a Roman legion, uh, specifically took a trip to uh, the area around Tunisia, uh, where there's been lots of turmoil uh, of late, uh, northern Africa, uh, because he wanted to examine a reputed grave of an 85-foot skeleton. It has been legitimately reported that the Carthaginians, uh, they lived in Carthage in uh, northern Africa. Carthage would be in, we believe, Tunisia or that vicinity. Uh, that two skeletons were uncovered in the BC era of about 300, uh, 200 BC. Uh, these skeletons were 36 feet in height. Many such have been found since. Recently reports have come out that 17 footers, that would be half of the 36ers, five meters plus, have been found in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is also on a meltdown and uh, financially on the verge of bankruptcy along with quite a few other countries of the world. Saudi is mostly uh, desert. Study the maps, look at the maps, spend an evening looking at the globe and allow the inner to help you understand. Allow things to teach you rather than Googling everything all the time. Saudi Arabia was part of a massive, <coughs> massive nuclear war. Nuclear war leaves vitrified glass and it also leaves desert and sand. Another area that is all desert and deserted where a large giant 17 meter, uh, 17 foot, uh, 20 foot was found is in uh, the middle of nowhere. It's called the middle of nowhere from some points of view. It is uh, Ayers Rock, Oularu, in Australia. Another large one found. This is top security all over the planet because, of course, these refute, these discoveries refute the entirety of the program that you have been hoodwinked into believing. In addition, Strange, strange, strange uh, head skulls have been found all over South America, uh, in the Mediterranean. Malta was well known. Uh, Malta is an island just off of uh, northern Africa. Malta had many skeletons of what's called the dolicoencephaloid. You call them cone heads. South America, the same thing. Some of them have ferocious teeth and fangs. Some are the result of Atlantis. Atlantis, again, was Enki's experiment. And things got carried away. 
after the primitive worker was made. And they could get souls to incarnate into the primitive worker. Many of the first batches were failures, couldn't get a spirit to occupy what they were designing. Then they got it to work, they got the clones going, and then after a while, as you have the expression, all hell broke loose. And just because they could, they did. It's happening today all over the world. You have creatures that people are sighting. Strange creatures, dogs, man dogs walking on hind legs, wolf people, goat people, flying people, moth men. Some of these are throwaways, escapees uh, from experiments. Some are throwbacks from Atlantis. Uh, they have been pushed underground. They live in remote areas. Uh, lots of things are coming out of the remote areas now because of the electronics everywhere are not only disrupting humankind, they are flushing out life forms that have been hiding, that have been cohabitating Earth with you, and they don't really harm you, but these electronics are designed from many levels to, let's say, disrupt life forms that have hajirad or escaped uh, into desolate areas, mountain areas, etc. You are under intense satellite uh, monitoring and sophistication, and then you have outer satellites that no one will dare admit are there, and these are called the Anu controllers. This another uh, outer, further ring of our new technology satellites. The story must be integrated. There's not a lot you are going to do about it. Understand that. So don't get frustrated. Long time ago we said that you are here to witness. You are here to evolve and to live as best you can without fear. And when you get a signal of fear, if you use fear properly, it will tell you when to take action. Otherwise, to live in fear is a waste of time. And so you are here to witness and to make a difference as stabilizers and to activate your biological computer as best you can to your own capabilities and not to compete or to compare, but to emulate and to inspire. This will again create another wave of people and another and another and another. And this is what Enki is banking on. And you are being tweaked by the sun. Enki and others know how to use the sun, the energy of the sun, to transmit down to very basic DNA levels. What's been happening since the 1960s? Stay out of the sun. Stay away from the sun. The sun is bad for you. And then in the last, what, 30 years, 40 years, weaken, weaken your system so that you will not fulfill Enki's gift, Enki's dream, and awaken with compassion and get the biggest, biggest picture and say, wow, I really understand this. Can you imagine? That's why you're here. Think about it. Think about it. And we like that you are laughing. It is important to laugh. You know, laughter actually boosts the immune system. And one thing you want to do is boost this immune system. This is your personal victory. So let us spend a few minutes now before we do uh, lunchtime, and because it is the sunlight that not only boosts the vitamin D in the body, and without vitamin D, uh, many of your uh, health practitioners will say that you are not going to heal. You need vitamin D. Uh, there are certain chemical components within the body. Yes, you are spirit in the body. The body is, is a combination, a, a most miraculous being, a, a, a design of such impeccability and wonder that you're never going to own anything in this lifetime that compares to your body. You need minerals. 
minerals are very, very important. Your diet is deplete of minerals, and so the soils uh, have been uh, uh, made sterile almost. Uh, people used to have more of their own gardens. Uh, some people say that the ashes that people used to burn in their fireplaces, the coal ash, the, the wood ash, would be put in the garden and the dirt and it would restore the mineralization. So remineralizing your body and getting sunlight, good sleep, fresh air, breathing deeply into the bottom of the lungs will calm you down or revitalize the body. You need oxygen. Check your breathing to see how deeply you are breathing. You basically suffocate because you don't use the momentum of breath to bring it into the bottom of the lungs. You also need to be hydrated. To the body needs a lot of water. It is an electrical mechanism. And so the water acts as a conductor of ideas and energy. It flushes out toxins. Um, much illness has been reported to occur because of dehydration. Very, very important magnesium. Uh, and some people take it in a, a liquid form. It is said that uh, it transdermal on the skin is easier to absorb under the arms, the lymph areas uh, where the magnesium can come in. It creates mental stability. Lots of people who are losing it have no magnesium in the body. Mental nuttiness, insanity can be fixed with mineralization and putting healthy things back into the body and then dealing with the trauma. There's always an emotional upset of sorts that people want to run from, yet it is the emotional upset, the trauma, the violation, whatever it is that has happened in life or other lifetimes, that once it is dealt with and the positive purpose of the event is found. That does not make the event good. It means what's the positive purpose uh, that comes out of this so-called traumatic situation? And it's usually, well, I'm never doing that again. Smarts. Do you understand? Change. Elevation. All right, back to, you need magnesium. You need potassium. Everyone, every day, there was a man named Mr. Braggs. Perhaps you've heard of him. He was a strong man, a farmer. He had apple orchards, organic apple orchards. He ran the farm. He said he made a tonic every day, two to one, two apple cider vinegar to one teaspoon of honey in a glass of water. Alkalines the body, stabilizes, etc. Some of you are hypersensitive, super hypersensitive to the electronics, to food, to everything. This hypersensitivity is often a outpicturing, a redirection, redirecting of psychic sensitivity. In other words, people. Uh, overly sensitive to today's environment, which is a lot of you now, actually need to redirect that sensitivity into the psychic realm so that you can assist others. And some of you have been burned, toasty toes, uh, locked up, punished, uh, all manner of, of punishment either by soul or by record in the DNA where people were punished very severely for talking to plants for not going through the church to get the information, for going directly to spirit, to what we call creator, source, not Anunnaki. Do you understand? There's a big difference between the Anunnakis who set themselves up as your gods to worship in every religion. There's no, no exemptions. And the creator, the source. And the Anunnaki even refer, would the creator approve of us doing this, creating a primitive worker in their long debate? And here's what they said. Yes, if we can think of it, the creator would want us to do it. Sounds 
like rationale that your children give you now and again. Yes. Well, I thought of it, Mom. You weren't, keys were there. I thought I'd take the car for a spin. It hasn't been out for a while. I'm sorry I ran into the telephone pole when I'm only 12 years old. You get it. Power, power, power without wisdom. And so, in summation, for this morning's discussion, and you have been a remarkable audience. You have taken it all in. You are good absorbers. You are here for a reason. You are here to make a difference. You are here to change your lives big time. The manure is going to hit the fan bigger than ever. You can be okay. You are here to hold frequency and to make very, very wise decisions. And we will speak this afternoon and tomorrow about the logistics of these decisions. But today, this morning, this early afternoon, very important to understand what you are playing with. Your own power, which is growing exponentially in every moment. And Sedona, Sedona waits for we and people like you to come. Because the rocks, the energy here, the native people knew this is a, a place of healing, of restoration of taking you to high vibration if you don't get caught up in the darkness and the confusion. Your choice. Choose well, dear friends. We'll see you later on this afternoon. <laughs>